Welcome to another five minute ish review. As I continue to cover the full moon vampire subspecies saga, I had to take a slight detour and take a look at 1997's Vampire Journals. After the release of 1994's Bloodlust Subspecies 3, there were no solid plans to, to continue the series. Ted Nicolau and Charles Band didn't want to leave the vampire mythos behind, however, so Nicolau got to work on writing a story about some new vampires within the same universe. These vampires were not the decrepit, drooly monsters like Radu. Instead, they are beautiful and handsome and easily work within the societies around them. In Vampire Journals, we meet Zachary, a reluctant vampire that has taken it upon himself to hunt down and destroy all the vampires in his bloodline. With the vampire killing sword of Lar Larites, he makes his way to Bucharest to hunt down the vampire Ash, the music lover. Ash has fixated his music-loving but dead heart on beautiful pianist Sophia, who is currently performing in Bucharest. While walking home from a rehearsal, Ash starts to make his move on Sophia, but Zachary intervenes. Ash disappears, and Zachary escorts Sophia home. The two connect and start up an immediate friendship. Back at Ash's lair, he seeks advice from a mystic who tells him that the coming of the vampire killer was foretold. But Ash must not worry, as he is the stronger, and it is ordained that he will prevail. The next morning, Ash sends a human co-conspirator to meet Sophia and invite her to perform a, at a private show at Club Muse, a trendy nightclub owned by Ash. Sophia agrees and during her performance is bitten by Ash and captured. He spends the next several nights draining her of her blood, wanting her to voluntarily take his blood to complete her transformation and become his apprentice. Zachary engages Ash in a battle of wits as well as brawn in order to try and save Sophia from the curse of everlasting death. I watched this for the first time since its original release in 1997 and found myself enjoying it much more than I thought I would. My original opinion, from what I can recall, was of disappointment. I think I went in assuming it would be related to the subspecies films and that maybe it would finally provide some closure to the fate of Michelle. Going in this time, knowing what it was, I found it much more entertaining. While certainly not without its flaws, it creates a larger world that could exist within the subspecies universe, and in this world you could tell other stories than what we've seen in the previous franchise. Which brings me to what could be its biggest flaw. The story here feels like an abridged telling of everything we saw in the first three subspecies films. Dipping back to the first film, we have a vampire with his sights set on a beautiful woman, a woman that spurns him at every chance, but that only makes the vampire one or more, and we have a vampire with a good heart that wants to destroy the antagonist and save the girl. The remaining themes of reluctance, betrayal, and conquest that we see between Michelle and Radu are spread amongst a larger cast of characters, but that doesn't make it any less familiar. Perhaps there aren't as many tales to tell about a vampire as one might want, and this criticism could be leveled at any film on the subject. I'm on the fence on the casting of the film. Jonathan Morris, I don't mind his ash, he plays it with a subtle evil through most of the film, but can be proper scary and animalistic when it's called for. David Gunn as Zachary lays on the soap opera level of brooding a little too heavily. He'd be right at home in a Twilight movie. I get that he's the reluctant vampire and he hates his existence, but his continual dour expression, which is only exaggerated by the fake fangs under his lips, makes me wonder how Sophia would find him at all enigmatic as we are led to believe that she does. He is at least as creepy as Ash, so why she gladly accepts Zachary's company after being attacked is... questionable. As it turns out, Vampire Journals is an important chapter in the overall franchise and it should not be skipped. So give it a shot, and if you are going in forewarned, maybe you won't be as disappointed as I initially was. Please let me know your thoughts on Vampire Journals and the subspecies franchise. Follow the link in the show notes to, our, to all our social media and contact information, or just drop me an email at timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com. 